come to the right place, Hakuna Matata. This is not an orchid, clearly, but I do want to talk about Colomy. I want to do an update on the keiki that we have in Colomy for almost 16 months now, but not just the keiki. I wanted to show you that Colomy can be successful with the elephant foot, or is it a ponytail palm that I have in here? growing in colonies since the day I got them. And I got them as hitchhikers from one of those rescue tables, little oncidiums, the no ID that I have that is blooming so beautifully. At the time with the fragrance and everything, didn't know what it was. And these little guys were in there, three of them. However, they were tiny, like really small. So in comparison now, in the three years, they have grown from having like a little olive size base to, what did I have? Started to get to grapes. Last year it was walnuts. And now we have got like ping pong size. Maybe not the shape, but the size, they're progressing quite nicely. And because I was dubious about colony back in the day, I still bought it because I thought it was pretty. I wanted to figure out how I could use it. And I thought, well, now that I've got it, I'm going to apply them with my little elephant foot. I call them elephant foot. Maybe that's the African thing to say, but actually they're probably the ponytail, but baby babies, so they don't have all their little frills yet. Anyway, I wanted to use them for the colony for orchids, but I was suspicious, very suspicious, because of all the properties and claims that they have regarding how you should cultivate orchids in colony. And it wasn't making much sense to me that colony has a lifespan of a fertilizer five years. No need to fertilize, no need for drainage holes, all of that stuff, it's just like the holy grail. And for that reason, I put my Phalaenopsis keiki into it as an experiment for the channel last year. We're gonna look at that afterwards, but these guys need to be separated. And I found this cute, cute little log. Look at this, <laughs> in the bonsai section. I wish it would have been in white, but then it would look a little bit more like Art Deco. Anyway, never mind. I thought for the next three to five years, they can, be like the three little stooges lined up in this log and I will continue to use colony. The unfortunate thing here now though is for years and years, this is their second topper that I commissioned for them, second size up. They were in a very, very small little Tupperware and very, very shallow. But uh, I don't want them in Tupperware anymore. I'm glad that they've made it this far. And you know what? I didn't bring any cutting tools because I thought that the roots wouldn't be this extensive. And I really don't want to cut into this root ball. But you can see how the colony doesn't hold on to the roots at all. Oh yes, and another reason I didn't use the colony straight away when I got it because they had run out of white colony. And in my collection, I like a lot of white on white on white. So, I got the green as a replacement. They didn't tell me at the time of the order that they didn't have white. They just sent me green and I thought, well, okay. So there were several reasons. I was dubious about all the beautiful holy grail descriptions of what colony is about with regards to orchids. No drainage holes and all that business. It was just all a little bit suspect in my opinion. But for the ponytail, Ah, you tell me in the comments if you recognize this. The closest I can always think of when I see these is the elephant foot. But colony for the elephant foot would be perfect because they don't want that much water. I can put drainage holes. I, if I need to, because they were little, I had it stood in a saucer of water to the begin with because these guys didn't have that many roots. And colony, what you want to have happen, even with an orchid, is have roots long enough that reach the bottom of the vessel, container, whatever you're going to use, 
and then fill up around it and the base is always covered in a little bit of water until it dries out and then you fill out the, you know, you spray the surface of the pot until water pools again into the base. Well, all of that was out the window with regards to these guys when I got them because that is not what desert plants like. So these have been with me now also for three years. I would like to reuse this again. We'll have to see because clearly it is reusable. But let's see, the idea being with this is to have them in the pot, roots right in, fill around with colomine and let them grow until they touch the edge of the log. That's the idea. And I can pour water through them at liberty without having to worry about saturating the root bowl. I have a drainage hole down here. It's a little bit big. I don't want the colony to fall out of it. So I've got myself a little piece of lava rock that I'm going to just place over the top. And let's put these into position as we want them. Roots straight in as per the colony instructions. I hope I didn't underjudge this log just because of its cuteness and thinking these guys were so teeny tiny that they're actually a bit bigger. But that's okay, that'll last. That one can go there. I have a little bit of a narrower one. Do I want the narrow one at the edge, the big one? Yeah, I think I'll put the narrow one at the edge here. Again, follow me instructions, roots right at the base. And no, this is not an orchid, but I'm still following their instructions. And let's get you in over here. Make sure that everybody has enough space to grow and develop for another three years. And no, these have not been fertilized at all. As per colony instructions, no fertilizer whatsoever. I've done several videos on the colony itself. Now I'm going to see, I have fresh colony here, but it won't be enough. So I am going to clean up my colony right here as best as possible so that I can at least pour in the old stuff into the base and I'll be back to finish the potting up and then we'll go and check out the cakey. go. All settled, all sorted. Let's give it a little wash through just to make sure that the roots have some water. Then I have to take the Stanhopias out of the sun and we get on to the little cakey and see what that's doing in comparison according to what Colomy expects us as the consumer growing it for orchids should do. So here's what we're looking at now. This is the pot of the Phalaenopsis caking. There is no drainage in the holes as per colony instructions. The roots are all the way to the bottom, but you can see the scum and the sconge and all that nasty stuff, just that perimeter on the bottom of the pot. In comparison to the one that we saw with the elephant foot, it also had some scum at the bottom of the pot, but not as much because it is not as wet an environment. So let's have a look-see. We still have that black root from day one that was in there, never changed it, never cut it off. Some are still green, they're still functioning. The roots up here never ever continued to grow. It just stopped. Not saying that they're unhappy, but there's not enough humidity for them up here. I am in Southern Spain. I have an extremely dry climate for most of the year. I do not supplement with humidifiers and all of that. So that is my disclaimer. I'm not saying that this product doesn't work, 
But the thing about not fertilizing is having secondary effects. It has only been a year in this pot. And thank you, Michael, for telling me about the nitrogen deficiency on this leaf. So what I've done since, I've intervened with every time I missed the surface of the pot, it's been getting calcium magnesium. And the next time, it's just been getting plain RO water. And the next time, it's been getting a balanced MSU fertilizer. And in this case, I put in 300 parts per million. Only misting so that the base has a little bit of water in the bottom as per Colomy instructions. I don't know if it's visible, but there is a little bit of water on the bottom. Considering that it is now really hot, I could fill it up just a little bit more. But I never fill up the water more than up here. But it's the scum that I find very, very disappointing. Now, yes, it could be that I'm losing this little cakey. Walter Sr. is doing really well, and that's why I'm just going to continue because I want to watch this long term. The thing is that Colomy does promise no fertilizing needed, misting when the base is without water, and it has all these kind of properties in the Colomy itself that doesn't promote algae. Well, then I don't know what this is. I really don't. The thing is that with Colomy, it comes in all these different funky colors, which is really cool for the presentation and the visual aspect. So you want to use it in a clear pot or a glass vase or something like that, simply because of the presentation with all the different colors Colomy comes in. But yeah, I don't see this as feasible at all. I would like to know what Colomy has to say if somebody is doing something wrong, for example. I've sent an email to them regarding the other videos I've made about their product and how I'm trying to apply it and grow a Phalaenopsis in there. And I've asked for them for their help to see if I'm doing something wrong. I've had no reply, so there's that. Forgive me for not going outside again. The elephant foot can handle it. The Phalaenopsis can't. There's way too much light out there. But let me just say, for anything regarding desert plants, free drainage, etc., Colomy works fabulous. These three do not know anything else since they came into my collection as stowaways, grown beautifully. Clearly, I have not fertilized them, so whatever that means, normally desert plants don't need much fertilizer. They just need a lot of good drainage. With regards to Phalaenopsis cakey, unless I'm told differently by Colomy themselves, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't. I'm going to pursue with this experiment with the cakey. Like I said, Walter Senior is doing well. But in the meantime, that is the update on our Colomy cakey. And we've given our three stooges their new setup out of the Tupperware and into a fancy snazzy log. <laughs> Really appreciate your time, a little bit unconventional. Thank you so very, very much for being here. If you have any questions, further questions regarding Colomy and what I've done, I will link the videos in the description below of where I was headed and the entire, you know, I have questions on Colomy before I even put my fowl in there. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I hope this was somewhat interesting. Your time was very much appreciated. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.